Hello and welcome. Uh, in our previous uh, video, we looked at uh, we looked at uh, what is Django and the websites that uh, use Django. And uh, in this uh, tutorial, we are going to look at uh, briefly look at uh, the tools that we are going to use or the softwares that we are going to use. I'm currently using uh, Windows, uh, Windows 11, but since Django is a web framework. Uh, it uh, does not. It is not uh, operating system dependent, so you can follow this tutorial also while using uh, Linux or even in Mac OS. And then, so we are going to begin with uh, the first tool, which is Git. Uh, Git is a uh, it's a, a software version control, or is a version control uh, tool or version control software. Uh, which is used in managing uh, projects, and we are going to be using it in conjunction with uh, in, uh, the link uh, in conjunction with GitHub. So we're going to host our project on uh, GitHub uh, so that it can be publicly accessible. Uh, GitHub is a platform that uh, is used by many developers and organizations as well, and it's a, a repository kind of a hub whereby projects are stored and code. Uh, software is versioned and developed across teams. So we'll also be using PyCharm. And in my case, uh, I'll be using a PyCharm IDE I prefer it. Uh, but you can also use Visual Studio Code. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this will be our primary integrated development environment, which you're going to be using to write code in. And uh, we're also going to be using the Docker desktop. And uh, while we are at it, uh, you can also uh, download for both Windows and Linux. And uh, this is a user interface for Docker desktop at this time uh, of this recording. So we have this dashboard whereby we have containers, images, and volumes. And uh, the final thing, uh, or rather, of course, we are using, we're developing a Django project. So in, this particular case, we will require Django itself, uh, which also means we need to have Python. Uh, I, did not, I forgot to mention that. And uh, then we are going to be using Pipen. Uh, Pipen is a, it is used to manage uh, Python virtual environments. And uh, I'm going to share a link whereby I've talked about uh, Pipen and uh, other management tools like virtual environment wrapper. Uh, so we are going to be using Pipen in this case. But, uh, feel free to use uh, ENV, uh, virtual env, or virtual environment wrapper, or whichever you're comfortable with. Uh, but in this particular tutorial, we are going to be using Pipen uh, as it is my preferred. And this is the documentation of Pipen. And uh, for all these, I'm going to share the links in the description uh, below. And uh, so you can, I won't go into the details of uh, these softwares. Uh, you can refer to them in the links that I'm going to share. We're going to create a PyCharm uh, project or a Django project in, in inside PyCharm. And uh, this tutorial primarily is, uh, is uh, geared towards those people who may want to begin using Django or may want to develop a website or a personal portfolio website, uh, which is among the would refer to it as a beginner portfolio project. So let's uh, dig in and uh, open PyCharm. And I'm um, using uh, PyCharm Professional Edition. However, uh, if you're using PyCharm, uh, the free edition, you may find some features are not uh, similar or they're not the same as the ones that are in the uh, professional. Professional Edition has additional features. So I've opened it and this is a uh, start screen. So I'm going to click on this button that is labeled new project. And uh, actually, uh, yeah, so since we are creating a project in our, in the, in this particular, in this computer, uh, something that I forgot to mention, you can also open an existing project using the middle button, and then you can open a project from uh, a version control system like GitHub or Bitbucket or any other version control system as long as you have the link. So since you are creating a new project from scratch, you're going to click on the new project. 
And uh, this is also another difference. If you're using a free PyCharm version, then you may find that you may know some of these additions like uh, we have here on the left panel may not be there. Uh, so in my case, for example, this Django is there. So I'm just going to use the create a Django project, which and which PyCharm will create some additional files for Django without me having to go to the command line interface or uh, using the command line interface. So I'll call my project, uh, my uh, website, let's call it my website. And in this case, as I had mentioned, I really, I would want to use Pipen. I prefer it to virtual learn. We also have poetry and Anaconda if you're using uh, Conda, mini Conda or Anaconda. And uh, all, they all do, primarily they do the same thing, but in a different way. So most people are conversant or familiar with virtual learn. So for me, I'll use Pipen, which I've uh, also installed, but you can stick to virtual learn if you prefer that. And the Python version that I'll be using is 3.8. Uh, however, uh, I also have 3.1, uh, 3.10, but I'll use 3.8 as my base interpreter. And uh, in this case, I also have this pipen. So in the event that you do not have pipen, then you can install it using uh, pip. As uh, I had, uh, it, uh, the description of installation is on the documentation page that I have shared in my previous video in the description below. So for the rest, I think I'll leave them as they are and I'll just click create. So this will create a new empty Django project and uh, it is setting up the pipen. Yeah, and uh, it kind of shows this tip of the day pop up that I do not need, so I'll just close it. So it may take some time, uh, depending on your machine and other factors. So we are quickly going to look at, uh, it's installing Django from the internet and I'm presuming in this case, it's installing the latest Django, which is 4.0.5, I believe. So one thing that you'll notice is that on the bottom left, bottom right, we have no interpreter, it shows no interpreter. And that is what it's creating right now, the virtual environment. So once we have installed it, then it's going to pick it up. So this is, a, we have a new Django project. And if you analyze this project, you will see that uh, we have the project folder. And then we have uh, a manage, uh, the manage.py, we have the pip file and pip file.log. So let's quickly analyze what these files have. So we have these uh, init.py. Uh, so this one kind of tells Python that it is uh, this is a, a package or this is a, a yeah, kind of a package uh, folder. So you, whenever you see a folder that contains .init.py, then it tells Python that uh, this is a, to, to treat the folder as a package. Uh, you can refer to details in the Python documentation. Then we also have these uh, ASGI, which uh, is uh, I think it's a more recent inclusion, and it is for uh, an enhancement to the uh, server gateway interface. And uh, yeah, we also have the settings of UI file, and this we are going to interact a lot with this settings file because it contains the settings for the Django project, database, uh, templates, uh, static settings, and uh, application installed apps. And then we have the URL. So this is the URL configuration for the project. And we're also going to interact with it. And then this is the configuration for the web server gateway interface. And uh, it, it is normally used to, when you are, it's very important when you're hosting your uh, Django website, some server, web server or some, some sorts. So we, ha we also have a folder that has already been created for us, which is templates. And these templates, uh, this is a folder that hosts or that houses the HTML files in which we normally refer to them as templates. And then we have the manage.py. So this is a utility for the management commands or administrative commands for Django. And we'll be interacting with it as well. And then we have this file, which is called the pip file. So the pip file cons contains 
uh, the list of the packages that are in this uh, project or in the this uh, virtual environment. So for example, it has already installed Django. So if we install something else using Pippen while we are within the virtual environment, then it's going to be ad added here. Uh, one thing I like about Pippen is that you can be able to distinguish or you can be able to set projects as uh, you know development packages or the uh, local packages uh, without having to interfere with you know uh, dependencies and uh, what have you because my Python management of packages uh, can get messy right, as the project becomes big. So we also have the list of Python in this file. And then we have this log file. Uh, it is synonymous to, uh, if you have used Node.js, we have the, uh, it usually has a log file or composer or even Ruby projects. You'll find that they have this log file and it, it kind of contains the, uh, if you see, it has the hashes and uh, references to the packages, particular packages. And these hashes are, I presume, uh, may not be correct, but I think they are also used to identify the uh, security or the uh, confirm that the packages are, you know, they are actually uh, authentic in some way. But you can refer to the pipen documentation for more understanding of the pip file and the pip file.log. So we have been able to create a new project and uh, we are going to, the first thing we are going to do, we are going to create an application. And our first application, in this case, we are going to use a terminal. And you'll realize that uh, the default terminal opens in PowerShell, uh, but I think I can tell it to open in uh, CMD. I prefer using CMD because I can be able to know whenever I'm inside an, uh, an active environment. In this, you may not be able to see that. So I'll just close this PowerShell and I'll stick to this CMD. So let me I'll clear the screen. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check. I can use PPList to, to check which packages I've installed. And as you can see, these are the packages that are there. So we were installing Django, but you'll notice that we have quite a number of other things like TZ data and uh, backports. So these are dep uh, dependencies which have been installed. Uh, Django cannot work on its own, so it requires one way or another the SGIRF backports and TZ, TZ data, among others. So uh, we can also. Uh, now we are going to install our, uh, create our, sorry, we are going to create our first application, start up. We are going to call it website. So let's see what happens. Whenever I refresh my window here, you're going to see that it has created a new folder. This folder was not there before and it contains a bunch of files. So we have migrations. Uh, remember the init, uh, this folder is the one that stores the migrations whenever we update our database schema. We are going to see that. And then we have the admin.py that handles the administration, uh, uh, administration models and all that. Uh, we have the apps.py, we can customize this application uh, in various ways. And then we have the models.py that contains the database uh, schema. And then we have the tests. So even in this tutorial, we may be looking at uh, writing uh, unit tests in our application. And then we have the views.py, that uh, this is where we write our views. Uh, so the, we talk about Django being a model view template uh, framework. So we have the models here. That is where we write our uh, database schema that, are, that is synonymous to the SQL statement, but in Python code. And this is what brings the aspect of uh, object relational mapping or ORM as it's uh, well known. And then we have the template. So the model, the view and the template are the ones that bring about the MVT kind of uh, pattern that we are talking about. Actually, it's also, a, can refer to it as a pattern uh, of sorts. So uh, that said, uh, we are going to try and test our Django uh if it's running so how can you do that you can use the python 
So in Linux, you'll have to type the whole word Python, but I believe in, in Windows, you can type py. Then I'll use manage.py run server. So this command runs the local development server. And uh, it's running on port 8000, which is a default port. So I can copy these and paste it in my browser. Yeah, and you'll see that it is running. So this confirms to us that uh, Django is running uh, successfully. So we have been able to create a plain Django uh, website with an application. And we are going to look at, uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to see how we can, uh, the first thing I would recommend is putting this project under, under uh, Git or under uh, version control. So we are going to see how we're going to do it in the next tutorial. So if you like uh, my video, or my other videos, uh, uh, please uh, like, uh, share and subscribe. And uh, it helps to help promote uh, this content and, you know, share the creator knowledge sharing, uh, you know, spirit. Uh, so thank you for watching.